Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Yorsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in the second video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on object oriented PHP, I want to take you back to constructors and show you an alternative that's a little bit more common, uh, which is something I'd recommend you use. And then from there, we're going to take a look at the scope public. So if you remember in the first video tutorial, we created a greeting, and that greeting had a public variable, uh, public parameter. And so that is actually not the best practice. So I want to show you how we can create that as what's called private and the benefits of doing that and why you should always do that. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I develop them. Uh, they're only $20 and I've been a bit late with a few video tutorial series uh, getting them up here for sale. But I do appreciate each sale. It goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So uh, if you can't afford the $20, but you want to help out, please just leave this video tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment. Let me know how it's helping out. I greatly appreciate that feedback. And if you can, please purchase the tutorial. Help me continue to teach you. That said, um, I'm going to go back over to localhost and you'll see here I'm at a new file. It's a square object and this is what we're going to be working on in this tutorial. Um, but just opening up my Vim editor here, you'll see that I've got hello world, square, hello object, square object. So I've got two classes and then two HTML files. Really, they're PHP files, but that's okay. Um, we're going to first go into hello world.php. And so this should look familiar to you. I just copied over from tutorial one, and you'll see that I've got construct. The more common approach to creating a constructor uh, is to use the same name as the class. And so if you're using Java or any other programming language, typically, I shouldn't say any other, but typically you'll see uh, the constructor be the same name as the class. And PHP can interpret this as well. Um, uh, I don't want to say when this was introduced, but previously it was use the magic method. Now PHP will interpret the class name. So you can go ahead and name this as hello world. And uh, you'll see here if I go back over to hello, hello object, it's the exact same file, no changes, right? Um, I can just, just to prove it to you. Oops. If I reload this page, exact same functionality, no difference, right? So, so that's good. That's what you should be doing from now on. Um, so, uh, that's what we'll be doing for this video tutorial series. Now, on to our new class, which is called a square class. And so, what we're going to do, and oops, I've already given things away here. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at a class which will take a length and a width, and it will give you the area for that. And so. Uh, what I've done here is I've created a public length and a public width, uh, and then I've got the constructor. So uh, it's just calling the same name as a class, and so square. And it takes the length and the width, and then it's going to set the internal values to that. So this length will be equal to the length passed in. This width will be equal to the width passed in. This is the same as tutorial one. It shouldn't come as a surprise to you. I've gone ahead and I've created a, a function called calc area, and it's camel case. So meaning that the second word starts with a capital, the first word does not. And so all that this is going to do is it's going to take the length and it's going to return uh, it multiplied by the width. Uh, quick side note here, I've gone ahead and added uh, comments. These are called docgen comments. We should have done this in tutorial one, and I'll be trying to do this consistently going forward. Um, but really what this is, is um, it's a consistent approach to commenting where I'm going to comment each method to say what the method does. And then if it takes any parameters, returns any values, uh, that kind of thing, or is related to things, um, you denote that with this ampersand and then the word param. There are specific uh, tags is what these are called. So um, param is one, returns another, C is, right? Um, these aren't necessarily all uh, done properly, right? Um, because I'm not typecasting the uh, parameter and that kind of thing, but it's better to have something rather than nothing. So now with that, we'll take a look at square object. And so this should be familiar to you as well. Uh, exact same HTML style. Uh, I've gone ahead and required our new class. And then I'm instantiating uh, the class itself. So I've got a new square, five by five. And then I'm asking to calc the area. And so I'm doing this uh, in PHP with double quotes and then squiggly brackets. And what this will do is actually interpret um, my call here. And this slash n actually is not right. Uh, I think that's wrong. It should be. Anyways, I'm just trying this out because it didn't work properly previously and I'm not sure why. Um, so maybe I need a slash n slash n. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. Anyways, um, and then we're unsetting the, the object. So if I go over to here and I just go to square object, you'll see I get 25. And so that's that, 
makes a lot of sense. And now I'm going to show you the problem with having our parameters as public. So I'm going to go ahead, object, and I'm going to say, yeah, the length, L-E-N-G-T-H, is equal to five, right? A string. And this is, this is plausible. Anybody could do this uh, throughout your program when you create your classes. And we're going to tell it to calculate the area. And it's going to give me zero. And that doesn't make a lot of sense because now I'm multiplying five by the word five. And so this is where you run into an issue when you have public parameters. These values can be changed anywhere within a program. And if people aren't careful, they can be changed to a value that you're not expecting. And so what should happen here is rather than public, this should be the word private. And here as well, this should be the word private. Uh, it is very rare that you should have any parameters that are not private. Uh, there's a third alternative, which we're going to talk about in a later video tutorial series, which is called protected. Um, but really what public means is the value can be changed anywhere throughout the program. Private means only this class can access this parameter. And so uh, that's even to, to look at the value, to set the value. Uh, it can only happen from within this class. So now, if now that I say this, if I reload my page, you'll see that I get a fatal error. I can't access a private property. And, and that's what you want to happen. You want your class to stop because you don't want somebody to inadvertently create a value and then create some bug and you're not sure why the bug is happening or what's going on. And so you do that by creating these, these private parameters. And so now what we have to do is we have to create, and you don't have to, but what we want to do is create some way to set the value for that and get the value for that. So that's where you have what's called a getter and a setter. And so here, um, this is typically commonplace. You'll see set and then the parameter name. So set length, and then it takes the length and then it sets it. And then for get, all it does is you call the method and it will return the length for you. And so it is controlling access to the variable. And this is very common practice. This is something that you want to do in object oriented PHP. You want to hide all of your internal mechanics of a class so that somebody can't um, mistakenly use them. And so uh, you'll see I've got the same thing for set width and get width. And I'm going to show you how we can take this a step further. But now if I go back to my, my class here, rather than call uh, length, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the length with the method five, right? So then I can go ahead and I can reload here. You'll see I still get zero. So I still have an issue there. But what we can do is uh, we can ensure that we get an integer value. And so for set length, we can do it. We can go ahead and say um, uh, if not is numeric length, we'll say throw new exception, you must pass a integer. Right, so there we go. Um, otherwise, we're going to say set it to length. And so we'll go ahead and reload. And you'll see here, now we've got this exception, you must pass an integer. Right? we've got this error that is stopping us. And so that's how you create uh, what's called a contract between your object. So people know they have to actually uh, pass an integer and to use your class properly. If they don't, they'll get this exception. And so in our uh, doc gen comment, um, I'm not sure if it's like this, throws exception, but either way, we're gonna do this. Um, uh, we'll throw an exception if the length passed is not an integer. And this is a bit misleading because we're checking if it's numeric. We're not checking if it's an integer, but uh, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You get the point of this. So um, this will set the length. And really, we should do the same thing for the width. And so down here, we'll paste this in. And so we'll say, if not width, right? And what you would do here as well is you would try uh, a try. And then you would do a catch. Right, and then you just go print E. I think it's message or something like that. 
I don't know. We'll see. We'll try this again. No, we can't actually set the, so that's fine. Um, let us go print. Oops, something went wrong. You wouldn't actually do this, but we're just handling it because you always want to handle your exceptions, right? So we'll see, we got, oops, something went wrong, right? Um, and so it just, it reprinted with, with five by five, right? Um, so anyways, yeah. That's how we can control that. And then what we actually want to do down here is you can actually typecast this as well. So we'll just go int and then down for set width. We can go ahead and set that as well. And so here you can reload and you can see that, oops, something went wrong. And so now, because we know of that, we can go ahead and we can set this to 10, save this. We reload this page and you see now we get 50. And so that's essentially the public and private that I wanted to show you. Um, that is something we're going to consistently do throughout our video tutorial series is we're going to always have our variables be private. And that's uh, specifically what you want to do when you're doing, uh, dealing with object oriented programming. Um, but that's it for this video tutorial. So just to recap, we took a look at constructors. So the alternative to the magic method underscore underscore construct is actually just naming your constructor the same as the class name. And then we took a look at the difference between public and private parameters and why you always want to use private parameters and how you can actually create a contract between someone uh, using your object and making sure that they do so properly. Um, and with that, we had our getters and setters, which actually properly uh, set our values so that we know how to use them throughout our uh, application. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment uh, or a thumbs up. Let me know how this video tutorial helped you. Uh, and alternatively, we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.